Quote, light will be shown on man and the origin of his history. End quote. Charles Darwin, Origin of Species. In the 1840s, fresh out of college, Charles Darwin was hired as a civilian first mate on a worldwide cruise aboard the HMS Beagle. The cruise lasted five years. The voyage of the Beagle took him to exotic locations, including the Galapagos, Tierra del Fuego, and around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. He observed exotic wildlife, including giant tortoises, iguanas, and rare species of monkeys. Darwin's Finches Of all the animals, it was the finches that got Darwin to wonder. Each local population of finches had different style beaks, some long, others wide, still others with hammer-like front ends. It allowed the birds to reach insects in a specialized manner depending on the localized environment. On the Origin of Species The full title, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection for the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Darwin would soon suspect that our own species had just as much of a variety as the finches and other animals he had observed. Indeed, from his Descent of Man, published in 1879, quote, There is no doubt the various races, when carefully compared, differ much from each other. Hair, proportions of body parts, capacity of the lungs, the skull, the brain, end quote. Here at Wright Anthro, we cover evolutionary science from an alternative viewpoint. You are about to gain knowledge that you are likely were never taught before in high school or junior college biology class. It is going to be fast paced, so you may want to take some notes. You may also want to rewind, review, and watch the video multiple times. Biology, a quick review. Deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA. It is the building block of all life forms on the planet. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Gene alleles are located on the chromosomes. They determine specific traits passed on from the male and the female parents. Genetic mutations occur on the gene alleles by various means. As we will soon learn, these mutations can come from the environment or they can occur randomly. Mendelian inheritance. Gregor Mendel was a mild-mannered 18th century botanist and part-time teacher in Monrovia. Entschuldigen Sie bitte. Ich spreche noch ein bisschen Deutsch. Schönen Sie kennen zu lernen. Haben Sie eine gute Reise. Auf Wiedersehen. Mendel was a compulsive gardener. He loved to cross-pollinate to come up with novel plant species. His very favorite to experiment with, pea plants. Mendel's Laws 1. Each inherited trait inherited from a parent is defined by gene alleles. 2. Each gene for a specific trait is independent from another. 3. The dominant allele is expressed, not both alleles. From OnlyZoology.com Mutations occur by chance or randomly, whereas natural selection occurs due to an environment's selective pressure on an organism. Natural Selection in the Animal Kingdom Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was an 18th century naturalist from Paris. Certainement, il est français. He believed that selection occurred during a living being's lifetime via acquired characteristics, and that living being would pass on those traits to their offspring. A Lamarckian would take the view that when the giraffe stretches its neck, it is altering its genes. During reproduction, the genes for the elongated neck will be passed on to offspring. A Darwinist such as Thomas Huxley would take an opposing view that selection occurs by natural forces such as disease, predators, and environmental change. Animals with traits better adapted for a rugged, dangerous, hostile environment are more likely to survive and pass on their genes. An animal of prey with even a slight advantage in traits better adapted for survival is more apt to pass on their genes. 
Giraffes with a mutation giving them even a slightly longer neck will be more likely to survive to pass on their genes. The giraffe with the mutation for longer necks would be better able to feed on nutritious leaves at the tops of trees. Additionally, the female giraffes would recognize the males with the advantage and would be more attracted to them as potential mates. This is known as population genetics. If a mutation proves better for helping the animal to survive, that allele with the mutation gets passed on. The quagga is the ancient ancestor of all zebras living today, going back seven million years. Zebra stripes confuse predators when they are in a herd. An archaic zebra descendant of the quagga with more stripes would be better adapted to survive and would have a leg up in the zebra mating pool. Would there be any different selective pressures at work for our own human species over the last 7 million years? Would larger brains prove to be advantageous? Fully bipedal locomotion? Recent out of Africa origins? For decades, the world was seduced by recent out of Africa theory, sometimes called Eve out of Africa. ROOA was pushed by the vast majority of anthropologists. From James Owen, National Geographic 2007, quote, We are solely children of Africa with no Neanderthal or hobbits in our family tree, according to a new study, end quote. Owen was paraphrasing David Attenborough colleague, zoologist Andrea Manica of Cambridge University. Three years later in 2010, Nobel Prize winner Dr. Svante Pabel and his team from the Max Planck Institute in Germany would confirm Eurasians have at least 2% Neanderthal DNA in our genome. More recent studies have shown that figure could be as high as 6-7%. to A team led by Chris Stringer and Katerina Harvati discovered a shocking find in 2019. The Homo sapien skull cap known as Epitoma 1 from Greece was redated to 210,000 years ago. We now know with very recent archaeological finds and redating of previously discovered hominin fossils in Romania, Czechia, Bulgaria, and Israel, that early modern humans were in Eurasia at least 300 to 400,000 years ago. As early modern Homo sapiens left Africa, they would have faced enormous selective pressures, including an inhospitable environment and ferocious predators that they had never encountered before. They interacted with Neanderthals and Denisovans who were well adapted to Eurasian environments. They adopted their skill sets. Sexual integration would have helped Homo sapiens to ward off exotic diseases. From the BBC 2011, dark winters led to bigger brains. Humans living at high altitude have bigger brains. The Oxford University team said the largest brain cavities came from Scandinavia. We have 400,000 years of separate evolution on entirely different continents in vastly different environments. Black athletes have superb athletic skills and nearly superhuman strength and abilities. 72% of the NBA and 70% of all NFL players are Afro-ethnics. European ethnics and Asians excel at math and sciences. Average IQ rates for East Asians are at an astonishing 105 to 106 level. Average Euro IQ rates are at 100 to 101. Quote, the survival of the fittest, which I have sought to express, is that which Mr. Darwin has called natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. End quote. Herbert Spencer, Derbyshire, England, 1891. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, 
It helps our efforts to promote an alternative view on paleoanthropology if you pass this video on to others. Thank you.